Hi guys and welcome to this week's video tutorial. This will be the second board in section 2 of chapter 10 which will deal with the topic of the double cannons in attacking for checkmate and uh, attacking to deliver a checkmate or gain a winning position. Okay, so without further ado, let us analyze this position. Now first of all, for this board, black will be the first to move. So I've changed the, I've changed the position of the uh, bot. Uh, red, as, as, uh, as usual, red would have one chariot, one horse, one cannon, three pawns, a full guard. Black would have similar material. Uh, sorry, red would have four pawns, sorry. Uh, red would have similar material. He would have two cannons, one chariot, one pawn, and a full guard. But uh, although red would have three pawns uh, in terms of material, the advantage, but black would be attacking. Now, at this point in time, the cannon and ch chariot were placed in the same file as the red cannon and king. The black cannon would also be pinning the horse and advisor to the same file. Now, uh, uh, however, red sorry, black would not have any good uh, moves at the moment to attack. Uh, <coughs> Even though I have any good moves at the moment to attack, and um, it will be black turn to move. So the best attack for red for black at the moment would be to play c9 equals to seven. If not, red could play push the pawn forward and then push his pawn forward slowly to attack, and the, the pawns would become a huge huge problem for uh, black later on. With c9 equals to seven, uh, this would be the winning move for black. Black would be able to gain material and have a winning position. So there are three counters that were enumerated. The first would be R3, H3 plus 4, whereby Black would try to uh, capture the chariot to try to put up a fight. But it would be too late because Black would simply capture the chariot. This would be a double check. So the king must, the, the only viable move for red would be to play would be to use the king to capture the chariot, but unfortunately, this would be a checkmate. In the second variation, uh, red tries to remove his advisor so that his king could move to a, a better position. So again, red would simply capture the cannon. Again, if the king moved, if the king captured the chariot, this would be a checkmate. So red can only make this move, but in doing so, he will lose both his chariot and his cannon just within the span of one move, and obviously this will be a winning position for black. So a5 plus 4 would not be viable either. Now what about e5 plus 7? Red would, black would simply play c9 equals to 6 and threaten to checkmate with uh, c7 plus, sorry, r4 plus 2 to capture the cannon. Now uh, to explain for beginners, let's say red uh, let's say red made any other move, for example, is 3 plus 4. This would be a checkmate because the, uh, the chariot will be delivering a check, and so would this cannon. Now, if red captured, this would be a check. And if red used the king to capture the chariot, this cannon will be delivering a check. So, this would be, this would be a, che uh, a checkmate threat. So uh, this example, I think, is very useful for beginners with a background in international chess, uh, hoping to learn some of the uh, finer details of the double cannons. And once two cannons and one chariot are lined up in the same file, usually they will take control of that file uh, in an instant. So a short re in this position, the best attack for black would be to retreat the cannon whereby it could move to the red file. H3 plus 4 is not viable because of a checkmate. Neither would A5 plus 4 because black would gain material and obviously a winning position. E5 plus 7 would be met with C9 equals to 4 whereby red would capture the cannon. The only viable move perhaps would be to play retreat but in doing so black would also gain a winning position. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video. If you like the work that I've been doing, please do subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you and have a nice weekend ahead.